China and Honduras mark one year of diplomatic ties. Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu and this is The Heat. China and Honduras established diplomatic ties in March of last year, and the relationship is making steady progress in areas such as trade and Chinese investment. CGTN correspondent Paolo Cabral spent the last several days in Honduras, where he's talked with several government officials. We begin with his report from Tegucigalpa. As China and Honduras celebrate one year of the establishment of diplomatic relations, there are already positive developments to speak of. The occasion was marked with events over the last few days in the Honduran capital, Tegucigalpa. The Chinese ambassador to Honduras highlighted, for example, the increase of about 21% in total trade between the two countries in 2023, reaching more than 1.9 billion U.S. dollars. Honduras' exports to China almost tripled during this period. Under the leadership and strategic direction of the leaders of our two countries, we are moving forward on a path that leads to greater political confidence and increased cooperation for mutual benefit. Very positive year for the relations uh, between the both peoples and countries. Uh, we have uh, made a lot of uh, advances in the relation. First of all, I think one is the access of Honduran products to China. Then we are uh, right now, at this moment, in Beijing, following up the fourth round of the uh, free trade agreement with China. This is very important. A number of documents have also been signed during these events in recent days. A particularly important one was a cooperation agreement allocating $275 million in Chinese funding to renovate, build and equip schools all over Honduras. Another highlight has been the presence of Chinese NGO GX Foundation, led by the vice chairman of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, Leung Xiong Ying. The NGO is coming to the country to assist in fighting dengue fever, a growing problem in several Latin American nations. I'm very pleased uh, to be here to offer to the people of Honduras uh, medical and public health uh, assistance. Uh, this is the first time uh, after uh, working in three Afri African countries and three uh, Asian countries that we're here uh, in Central uh, America. Trade and investment are key aspects of the diplomatic relations between Honduras and China, but cultural exchanges also play an important role in this relationship. An event at Honduras National Identity Museum offered guests a display of Chinese and Honduran culture in the form of dance, music and food, while allowing for guests from both sides of the world to mingle and deepen personal contacts. The Honduran culture minister says one idea is to promote the exchange of professors in artistic fields. It's an opportunity that on behalf of the government of President Xiomara Castro, we can demonstrate this friendship that we want to strengthen and embrace through the art, theater, music and painting. We want to have more technical exchanges. We want to exchange teachers in the arts, painting, music, and etc. After only one year of diplomatic relations, important developments have already happened, and both sides seem to be set on continuing to evolve this relationship. Paulo Cabral, CGTN, Tegucigalpa, Honduras. There is much to discuss, so let's get to it. Joining us now from Beijing is Ina Tangen. He is a senior fellow with the Taha Institute and the founder and chairman of Asian Narratives. Also with us from Boston is Jorge Heine. He is a former Chilean ambassador to China. With us too from Beijing is Benjamin Norton. He is founder and editor-in-chief of the Geopolitical Economy Report. And from Honduras, we are joined by CGTN correspondent Paolo Cabral. Thanks to all of you for being with us. Uh, Paolo, great to have you with us. Um, as I said, you spent several days in Honduras uh, looking at the growing relationship between China uh, and the Central American country. You also talked, uh, as we saw there in your report with the Honduran foreign minister, um, about issues like education, like trade. Um, let's listen to a little bit more of your interview. 
So we have signed today an agreement with uh, Ambassador Jubo here in Tegucigalpa uh, for the, uh, uh, the for a grant that the China is providing to Honduras uh, of about 100 million U.S. dollars uh, at this at this phase, and at the end it will be almost uh, 280 million U.S. dollars uh, that will be directed uh, to the education process in Honduras. President Castro is very keen to change the situation of the education in the country. Unfortunately, in the last 10 years of government that we uh, suffer a dictatorship, not investment has been made in schools. So right now, all this uh, support of China will be directed uh, to the children of Honduras. So I think this investment will be very important for Honduras, for the Honduran people. Uh, so the relation is very good. We also are uh, moving things in investment in, in other uh, projects that we will develop developing in certain areas like technology, infrastructure. We are developing an interchange between uh, government officials, uh, seminars, uh, media. So we are uh, working very well. Uh, we will have called a, a, a very early crop uh, and fruits of this relation uh, where the President Castro has decided to recognize the principle of one sole China, and also a very high level good relation between President Castro and President Xi Jinping. So uh, we are very happy uh, that we will get to this first years of uh, uh, productive uh, diplomatic relations. And the free trade agreement, what impacts could it have in Honduras? And is Honduras prepared to be a supplier of China? Because sometimes China has very big demands in terms of products. Are you prepared to be a supplier? Well, we understand that, but this. Uh, will open a great window of opportunity of Honduran products and there will be a certain possibility of a market and this certain possibility will uh, have an impact in the products, uh, producers in Honduras so they can program to develop uh, their markets uh, and possibilities to invest more in Honduras, to have more production and to give more val added value to the products in Honduras. So, and also we will have the possibility that investment of China's company in Honduras will be important. So, Paolo, in addition to talking to the foreign minister there about uh, investment, about trade, I mean, you also saw the two sides talk about education and also the potential for tourism uh, between the two countries. Um, how are Hondurans viewing this relationship, uh, this dip, which is now a diplomatic relationship, one year uh, after it started? Well, and then they're very much interested in making the best of it. And first, I just state a fact. In the contemporary world, it's really hard not to have relations with China, particularly for countries like in Latin America that are heavy exporters of uh, raw materials, of uh, minerals, and also of grains. And China is a big buyer of these and also a big investor around the world. So uh, it's just a fact. It's really hard not to have relations, full relations, uh, with China these days. And now we could more or less split this issue into uh, four ways. We can talk about trade, we can talk about investment, we can talk about cooperation, and we can talk about culture, which also includes tourism. So let's go one by one and then we talk about trade. Yes, the numbers just went up in this first year, about 20%. The total trade between the two countries went up and the Honduran exports uh, tripled. And particularly grains, for example, we visited a coffee farm that has just started to export uh, to China, and they hope to increase this a lot. You know that Chinese are taking increasingly a taste for coffee, and there is a, a big and growing demand of the Chinese for coffee from all over the world. Honduras, even though produces very high-quality coffee, they are proud of it. They were not exporting to China, and they are hoping this will happen right now. And then when I talk to government officials and, and experts in agriculture, what they say is that they hope this relationship with China will help to restore Honduras to its past. In the 1980s, 1990s, uh, early 1990s, Honduras was one of the uh, big producers of grains here in Central America. Some called it the granary of Central America. And so there is hope that uh, uh, the trade relations with China will help Honduras to regain this position. And again, just as I was discussed with the minister, one problem sometimes producers have in, in Latin American countries is to be able to supply the huge demand of China when they start selling. Then we have the issue of investment in that sense. Also, there is much interest here in Honduras. Uh, we know that China has been investing in infrastructure all over the world, heavily here in Latin America. So right in this country, for example, there are demands of renewed roads. One very important project that Hondurans are interested in is the construction of a 
buy oceanic railway that would connect the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans, two ports, one on each side of Central America, and also they are interested in energy projects. This is a country still heavily reliant on uh, fossil the fuel-based energy, and they want to move towards uh, renewable energy, and they also hope that China will help in that. Then we have the issue of cooperation and debt uh, agreement on education, $2.75 billion expected to be invested here in Honduras, and this money will go first to agricultural schools that exist around this country. This has to do with the Honduras development goals that has to do with education, but also trying to develop agriculture here, both to provide food security for its people, and also to make the country a better export. And finally, if we get into culture, we can also include tourism there. Uh, investment in infrastructure will also help tourism here in Honduras, and Honduras are also very much interested in trying to attract more Chinese people to this country. Among the highlights are Copan, which is a, a Mayan city, a pre-Columbian civilization. Also in the north, there is beautiful diving, and I'm actually, I'm a scuba diver myself and had this experience beautiful reefs here, as you don't see them preserved in many parts of the world. And also in terms of culture, as we just saw in, in the story, they do have interest of having exchanges, for example, having Chinese professors coming to Honduras, mm -hmm. Honduran professors and students going to China. So, yes, many prospects of this diplomatic relationship here in Honduras in several angles and several aspects. Thanks, Paolo. That's CGTN correspondent Paolo Cabral talking to us from Tegucigalpa. Now, let's get to the rest of our panel. Anna Tangen, uh, it sounds like Hondurans are very positive about this relationship between uh, their country and China, but how important is the relationship for Beijing? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's a smaller country, but it, you know, China has this uh, history of treating everybody fairly equally. There's good relations between uh, Castro, the president, and Xi Jinping. There's been uh, uh, meetings and exchanges. This is not something that happens a lot in the United States. Uh, you know, a lot of people put this through the lens of uh, uh, Taiwan. Uh, they switched over last year. This is the one-year anniversary, but I, I think it's more than that. I mean, you you have. Um, Latin America, which is uh, now the number one, uh, the tra I'm sorry, Latin America has become, the, China has become Latin America's uh, largest trade partner. And it's uh, been abundance of goods, and it's been doing everyone well. And as a result, you see countries like Honduras saying, look, we, we need to get in on that. Uh, we're not getting much from the United States, uh, but we are getting uh, things, uh, and they can see their neighbors doing very well with uh, China. And, you know, China's been combining uh, messaging with action. And, you, you know, you heard the report there. Uh, it's not just about uh, what China can get from Honduras, but it's also helping Honduras uh, address a number of problems. Uh, poverty, uh, low uh, yields in terms of uh, agriculture. They, they have a huge... Uh, uh, water problem at the moment because of a uh, hit, low rainfall and things like this. Um, and it's come a long way from 1904 when it was branded a banana republic by uh, the then president. Uh, it was dominated by a company called United Fruit Company. Uh, and there were many, many, many interventions, armed and otherwise, uh, by the U.S. government to protect uh, what it saw as its corporate interests. So lots of changes and positive at this point. Ambassador Jorge Heine, you know, as we heard that from our correspondent, um, exports from Honduras to China tripled over this past year. There's also a potential for a big expansion in trade. Um, how big is this for a small developing country to connect like this with a major economy like China's? Well, it is uh, very significant. And uh, beyond the increase in, in trade, which is uh, very positive, we should also underline the fact that there are uh, negotiations going on, I think, now in Beijing, the fourth round of the negotiations for a free trade agreement between uh, China and Honduras are taking place. Uh, with the fifth round, they should conclude. So that would be uh, another very significant signal that would institutionalize the, the trading relationship. Now, having said that, it is important to understand that Honduras is among the poorest countries, depending on how you measure it, the third or fourth poorest country in Latin America, not just in Central America. Therefore, it is in dire straits. Let us not forget that it was under 
you know, what many consider to have been a narco state uh, during the presidency of Juan Orlando Hernandez, the president, the former president of Honduras, who has recently been uh, convicted in a federal court and uh, is looking at perhaps, uh, you know, 40 years in prison as a result of his shenanigans and his working with the cartel de Sinaloa in, in Mexico. Uh, so, uh, Honduras is coming up out of a very bad patch. It certainly needs all the help it can get. And I would emphasize that what is really important uh, for China is to come through on the various infrastructure projects that have been put on the table by Honduras that Pablo Cabral mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, railway corridor, uh, some dams, uh, there, there's a project for a, a prison in an island offshore. Uh, so these are projects that would be very important. And I think uh, China there has a big opportunity. I understand conversations are going on, uh, but nothing has been decided on that. Quite right, Ambassador. I'm going to get to the uh, point about infrastructure in the region as a whole, but right now I want to get to Ben. Ben, good to see you. Uh, it's not just about trade. China is also investing in education in Honduras. Let's listen to the Ambassador. We have just signed the agreement to support the educational infrastructure project because education is very important for the development of a country. China and Honduras are together on this path of modernization. So, Ben, that was the Chinese ambassador to Honduras talking. The Honduras has a, a very young population uh, and uh, has major educational needs. China is set to allocate $275 million funding to help build schools in the country. I mean, what do you make of this growing relationship? You have wide experience of this part of the world. I mean, both in terms of trade and investment and also on expanding uh, social ties, cultural ties as well, tourism and in education as well. This is very important. Uh, as was mentioned, Honduras is one of the poorest countries in Latin America. And another issue that it's been dealing with is large amounts of debt that were piled up after a coup in 2009 that was backed by the United States that overthrew the elected government. And for a decade, there was a very corrupt government that was linked to organized crime and took on huge sums of debt. And by the time the current president, Xiomara Castro, came into power, the government had nearly 70 percent of GDP worth of debt and was spending about 50 percent of government revenue on debt every year. Obviously, this means that the government is limited in the amount it can spend on social services. And President Castro has emphasized the importance of spending on education and health care and security. And this, of course, education is even more important in a country like Honduras, where so many people are young and are looking for opportunities for employment. So I think this is one of the best ways that China and Honduras can boost their relationship. And it's a relationship not only based on, of course, diplomacy, not only based on economic needs, but I think it's also based on shared interests because China is the world's leader in poverty reduction. China has lifted 800 million people out of absolute poverty. And that's why so many countries in Latin America are looking to China for assistance so they can help to bring their populations out of poverty as well. And this is in mutual interest for both countries, right, for uh, Honduras and for China, because the more people in Honduras are lifted out of poverty, the more its economy grows, it will have a larger market for trade with China and it can also export more to China. So I think the way that both Honduran and Chinese officials see this relationship is one of win-win cooperation. Aina, you know, as we've heard, this is a country struggling with poverty, struggling with inequality, but uh, there is hope for the future. We heard the foreign minister talk about other areas, that a free trade agreement, uh, where a free trade agreement could be beneficial for Honduras, like tapping into Chinese technology. Uh, what is the transformative potential that you see? Well, actually, I, I would go back to education. Uh, you have a very large rural uh, population that is very, very poor. So, uh, almost 53 percent are, are in dire poverty. Uh, they have to transform their skills if they're going to be part of uh, an economy uh, that is more digital in nature. 
uh, and education is absolutely key for the long term. In the meantime, though, uh, the uh, railway uh, stretching across between the Atlantic and Pacific, very imp important, but also, you know, the, even small countries like this have to start participating in uh, development of IP. Uh, I, I believe very firmly that those who own the IP will be served by those who don't. So it's important that uh, there is a sharing of technology going beyond just, you know, how to uh, deal with crops and things like that into areas where the, the country can do well. And I agree with uh, my colleague's assessment. Uh, China benefits uh, when these countries emerge and have uh, dispo more disposable income. China uh, provides a lot of value-added goods. Uh, and meanwhile, its appetite for, um, you know, products from South America and places like Honduras are growing and stronger. Ambassador Heine, you know, you were talking a moment ago about the need for infrastructure, not just in Honduras, but across uh, Central America, across South America as well, across Latin America. Um, I mean, how important is it? Because China's been playing a big role in terms of developing infrastructure in these countries. It is. And uh, one uh, place where this is in particular visible in the case of Central America um, has been in the uh, role that China has been playing there, uh, operating ports, uh, winning a number of projects, and basically working on the transport and logistics side that is so important for enhancing uh, global trade. So in that sense, it seems to me, uh, the, the potential for Honduras is really getting an upgrade in terms of facilities, which, you know, the Honduras infrastructure right now is very poor, uh, is extremely important. So uh, in Latin America in general, in Central America in particular, infrastructure needs are very significant. Uh, China has a comparative advantage in that regard with construction companies that have a lot of experience, with financing that can be made available, uh, there is, of course, the Belt and Road Initiative uh, that has done uh, so much uh, in the region and elsewhere. So there are great opportunities there. And I would stress that it is important to move forward. Uh, what, is, what I find interesting is that uh, the Honduras government has proposed some very specific projects in a variety of areas, the dams uh, in, in mm. also this corridor, um, even, you know, uh, this, this prison that I mentioned earlier. So it is important to move ahead on those projects. Uh, you know, increasing uh, trade is important, but that uh, takes time. Uh, these projects can be uh, jump-started relatively quickly. Ben, looking at the bigger picture here, you know, if you look at Honduras, it's uh, in a part of the world which the United States would like to continue to dominate. It is the Western Hemisphere, as it's sometimes referred to, is, uh, to it. Uh, but, you know, do you see pushback from the United States when we look at China's growing impact in the region? Um, I mean, the United States, of course, sees its role very differently. Um, but what can you tell us about that? This issue is very important for countries like Honduras because the United States has a long history of meddling in Latin America. In the case of Central America, the U.S. has repeatedly militarily invaded the region, not only Honduras, also neighboring countries like Nicaragua, and in the 1980s, there were wars going on in these, country, in these countries that the U.S. fueled through the CIA arming and training rebel groups. So this is a region that has been destabilized by U.S. meddling. And today, we now see that the U.S. government has brought back, many U.S. officials have brought back this colonial rhetoric of the so-called Monroe Doctrine. This is a 201-year-old doctrine that essentially states that the U.S. treats Latin America as its proverbial backyard or sphere of influence. Obviously, this is very frustrating and upsetting to many countries in the region that are sovereign governments. And yes, they can have relations with the United States, but they want them to be fair and equitable. And in particular, U.S. politicians in the past few years have invoked the so-called Monroe Doctrine in regard to China's bilateral relations, consensual relations with countries in the region. Essentially, Washington has told countries like Honduras that they cannot have close relations with Beijing, which is a violation of their sovereignty. Yeah. Now, in the case of Honduras in particular, it's very important to emphasize that the current president, Xiomara Castro, is in fact the wife of the previous president, Manuel Zelaya, mm -hmm. who was overthrown in 2009 in a military coup that was sponsored by the U.S. government. So, you know, relations between the U.S. and Honduras and many countries in the region are very complicated. They're very tense. And China 
provides countries in the region more breathing room, more opportunities. It gives them an alternative so they don't continue to uh, get dominated by the United mm -hmm. States in, in this way that we've seen for, for over 100 years. So I think this relationship is very important. It's in both the interest of countries in Latin America and the interest of China to deepen their relationship for economic reasons, for political reasons. <laughs> And again, I just want to go back to the issue of poverty reduction, which China is the world's leader in poverty reduction. That's why so many countries in Latin America are looking to China to help you know, borrow from its experience so they can lift their people out of poverty as well. Ben, very briefly, because you mentioned President uh, Shumara Castro, um, what can you tell us about her in terms of what her priorities are for the country? Her top priorities are ending poverty, providing employment, expanding social services, so Mara Castro, of, of no relation to Fidel Castro, um, she's from a left-wing party, the Libre Party, and they have really emphasized the importance of empowering people, ending poverty. Women's empowerment is also a very important um, priority. Of course, she's the first female president of Honduras. And again, I mentioned that her husband, Manuel Salaya, was previously president, and he was overthrown in a coup in right. 2009. And something that both of these leaders have also done is try to integrate further with other countries in Latin America. Okay. Honduras was briefly part of an economic alliance right. in the region known as the Bolivarian Alliance. So th they're trying to advance the situation in, to move forward the situation in Honduras okay. and to lift their people out of poverty. I know very quickly, I've got less than a minute left, but as we look at China's growing impact in the region, I mean, how do you see it from a geopolitical strategic view um, I mean, and the broader implications, of course, that has for uh, the U.S.-China relationship? Well, it's really a microcosm of, you know, this multilateralism that's going on. Uh, yes, uh, China is providing an example. It's providing uh, action as well as messaging. Um, but, you know, it's up to these nations. And you're, you're starting to see a resurgence, uh, to, you know, obviously, Latin America, uh, China's Latin America's uh, largest trade partner. Yeah. Uh, that will continue, uh, despite what the U.S., uh, you know, complains about, because they're not willing to put any kind of real economic uh, means towards yeah. uh, you know, the U.S. interests there. So they can rattle their swords uh, about the Monroe Doctrine, yeah. but in the end, it's actions. Okay, and that is where we have to leave it. Thank you to all of you for being with us. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnand Naidu in Washington, D.C.